during the presentation I'm not going to give a lot of training the idea is that I'm going to work through the project and you can have a look at the way that I would approach it so I place my project name in the file place my farm name fill in my province parent diagram number and our TP number just going to create a new SM challenge folder there okay and this specific job is allo 27 and that we also got from the township details at the top here. oh sorry 29 there we go Thing. We can take it down. Okay, so that's now created a new project. First thing I do is bring in the DXF information. I want to get rid of all the extra information on here that I'm not going to need. Now with the, the information here that's overlaid, the way I approach it is to switch everything off and then only switch back on whatever I need from the program. So just quickly running through that information. Okay, so that's basically everything I need. If I click on the purge button, it will remove all the CAD layers that I've now switched off. And that gives me my first layout. Uh, explode the polylines that's in the file. and remove all the duplicated text and CAD lines that's also present in the file. So I'm taking all that extra CAD on the outside and moving it to a specific surrounding layer just to also get rid of all the information that I'm not really interested in at the moment but I still want to use at a later stage okay just to grab some of that text on the inside as well split it into layers I'm adding all the text with the word street in it and then just using my selective ID just running through and picking out all the other text that I that I want to take out and I also like to just default the, the text properties to something that's familiar to the way that I'm working I'll switch it off I grab all the old earth text Move that to a new layer, change the text properties and also just switch that off. So what I'm going to do now is just, I've got a boundary line there. So what I'm just going to do is just to clean up, there's some duplicate lines there still that will sit under the boundary line, so just taking that off. Now also just changing the line types and pin of the internal design just to also be a little bit easier on the eye at the end of the day. Okay, Now from this viewpoint I can immediately see there's some extra lines 
which in this case I'm just going to remove to get my uh, let me just quickly move that across as well okay so you'll see at this point I've now got a boundary earth layout, old earth numbers, extra text and surroundings. So that was a very easy way of cleaning up my my information to get to a point where I've got nice and clean CAD to just start with the process. Next step I'm going to do, I'm going to bring in those main figure points we had. If I open that using the ASCII format, it will bring that in. Okay, so I'm just going to manually shift it into place. So the way I do that is just to ID everything and use the move function. And just move into those coordinates and then using my snap modes place it onto the correct location okay then I just want to quickly assign 12 millimeter big all there and also just change them to place points so that I can see the the pattern on the screen. Place beacons, all of them. Okay. And then ID everything using my CAD housekeep function. I'm just gonna move all the lines exactly onto the coordinates to make sure that they snapping nice and good when it comes to that okay switch off my surrounding data so that I basically just sit with the boundary layer and then um, there's a little problem I see take that out so using the parallel check function I'm just going to quickly check to make sure that all these lines are, are parallel and it's a 19 meter line and uh, as I'm doing this I'm changing the pen colors and moving them onto a new block in a case like this I like to delete that line and replace it with a single line Okay, and that's a 16 meter line. So we can do the same over here. That one.
So every time a line turns green, it means that it's been checked and that it's now parallel to the other green line that's being changed. So they all change in pairs all the time. Uh, so it's just basically two clicks and you've got everything parallel. Here's one I've missed. So using my layers again, if I now switch off blocks, uh, we can switch off the boundary as well. It's a very quick way of just seeing if I've, if I've really covered everything. And at the top there, I can now immediately notice that there is a problem as well. So let's just quickly zoom in there. Uh, take out those lines, we don't need them. And we can just meet those two, meet those two. Um, there is also a little issue there. And I'm just going to move that onto the correct location. Okay, so that's the that's all the blocks done. So we also said in the challenge the next step then would be after you've checked that the streets are parallel, we're not requiring you to check the internals of the of the blocks to to be parallel, but you can use the function for that as well. The next step would be to do the splays. So for that, I'll basically switch off the blocks. Then using one of my filters, I'm going to ID all the lines according to a certain length. So you'll see all the splay lines are red. And I delete them from my project. Now with just the block lines on, if I ID them, and I go to manipulate and I put in splays at the 5 meters, you'll see immediately it's put in the splays for me on all the ID lines. And now I can switch on my picture. Now we still have got a few situations like this in the program. So for that, I basically just click on the lines. And as soon as the program gets those two lines, it will calculate the space for you. Oops, undo. Okay. So that should be all of that. Okay, so that's doing all the displays, either doing it manually or using our ID function and having the program automatically calculate displays for you. Okay, the next thing I want to do is to do the names of the blocks. So I want to assign my own specific point names. So using the point name, using my line endpoint snap mode, I'll start at block at A1, not beacon for now, uh, well, let's make that also 12 millimeter, and uh, we'll make it a, a block corner point. And in this case now I can just click click on the point to give them the correct names. If I want to go to the next one I'll just say B1 and do the second block and this I'm going to do for all the blocks now quickly And that's all the blocks then assigned in a very specific manner the way that I want to, to assign the point names there. I'll switch on my internal layout. 
Okay, so the last thing is I on the plan we've got some problems. I know specific is lines overshooting my main figure and some of the internal lines not perfectly trimming and meeting. So for that all I'm going to do is to ID all the CAD and then one last time CAD housekeeping and just doing what if, what the picture explains there, just cleaning up the CAD, making sure that everything is snapping and and in a perfect polygon shape. Then for all the rest of the plan, I'm just going to generate some points as well. So I've generated coordinates for the whole plan now. And then the next step would be to quickly do the earth numbers. So we're just putting it earth number layer. And we can make that a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to start numbering at number one. If you can pull, draw a line right through all of those over and it will automatically number them for you. In this specific case I've got some lines there that's going over the entrances of those ovens, so I just need to open that up using my cut function. And we end up with 192 Irvin at the end of the of the job. Next thing would be to just add two tricks for the project. So that's a list of all the tricks within Survey Maker, and I'm just going to choose the first two tricks just to use for this specific project. There's the tricks. I'm just going to edit the, the point number so I can easily get them into, into the program. And then we have an option to switch off the tricks. So they're in the project, but they're not visible. So they're not going to be placing my project in a little small space on the screen. So now to create the urban file, I'm going to create the server maker challenge urban file. Grab my main figure call this a main figure and then from the supplied info I'm just going to create the, of copy the figure description I'm going to keep that at earth number zero then for our trick beacons all I do is just enter the trick number that we that we imported into the project just now and then for the block corners, the program can automatically pull in the block corners, but it will be it will be treating them as closed figures. So I've got block C here that I just need to specify as an open figure, and block G at the top, and that's block K at the bottom, just to prevent that line from going across the plan. So that's then now all the block corners, main figure, and um, area for the main figure as well defined in the program then searching for the extra urban in the file the program automatically pulls that in for me and that then gives me the full picture of everything that I need to generate my plan let's bring cadastral plan make it full screen load up my urban file ok 
Okay, and there you have it. There we have a general plan, earth numbers, areas, uh, areas filled in on the side. We've got an area block of all the areas there. At the top, we've then automatically filled in all the information. General plan, Smallville extension, comprising, uh, with all the information filled in in the project. We've got our main figure with our trigs, and we've got all the block launches listed as well. Uh, with a server maker template, what we do is we fill in at the top. We fill in all the extras you might need, like servitude notes. If you don't need it, you basically just switch it off, and that will then give you the final plan. At the bottom, signed by me. Okay, and then. All I'm going to do, just for demonstration, just going to create a little inset there. Okay. Okay, and I can also include a little north arrow in there. Create that inset. So you'll see we've created the inset in there. And I can then take this inset and move it anywhere onto the plan where I ever need it. And just save this plan.